So, in order to make uh, a successful sump and pump package, you need a sump, a pump, and the bits to stick it together. Now, this is a barrel union. A barrel union is going to be used if you need to remove the pump for service or repair. Put that at the top. We have that trick. sitting at the top so that the nut doesn't fall down and it keeps debris out. And then there's a non-return valve down here. These are the, this is really important. So the non-return valve is a, it's a swing check. So I'll show you inside. If you have a look there, water will come out that hole. And then when the pump turns off, you've got uh, you know 20 or 30 meters of pipe above that. It's going to try and rush back into the sump. If this isn't working or isn't installed, the sump's going to fill back up with water. And the pump's going to re-engage, and it's just going to keep pumping up, pumping and rolling down, pumping up, rolling down. So, beginners' mistakes that you will have with these is putting them the wrong way around. There's a direction of flow on the side. Brandon had it right because he's a legend. That's what I do. That's what he does. The idea with this, you want the hole down low enough from the top of the sump that you can fit the fittings that he's got without the ball valve hitting the top of the sump. And you don't want it so low that the the, the pump will be affected by the, the, the um, I guess, infrastructure above it. If you have a look at this pump here, it's quite tall. So you haven't got much room from there to there. The great thing about this pump, you can have an outlet down here or at the top. You're probably getting a lot of echoing from that. So, is that, you'll fit these from the bottom? Yeah, we'll go on the side, just because there's not enough room to go at the top. So, this is a Grunfoss CC7, I believe. Yep. And it's, we choose to use Grunfoss for all of our pumps. We don't really, we don't stop anything else, do we now? No, nah, unless people ask for them. We've just, we've had, we've, we've danced between all, the, all of the brands. Uh, Grunfoss are the world's biggest pump manufacturer. They don't mess around. The client base that we deal with is predominantly trade and they don't have time to stuff around. So we buy the best, they buy the best and the rest takes care of itself. So Brandon's basically dry fit this together so you can see what it looks like. It's not, it wouldn't go in like this. He would need to thread tape all of the fittings up. And then this cap, what do you do? So we remove that. Yeah, it's a the, check valve that comes with it. The pump comes with a non-return valve, but it's, it's plastic. We've gone with a brass one. And then this cap, oh God. So professional. That'll just keep ringing. Uh, so the cap that I've taken off the bottom, you'll put on the top? Yeah. And that's got an O-ring yep. in it, so that seals up. You just want that hand tight? Yeah. Yep. So then Brandy can fit that swing check down here. Yep, that'll fit on the side there. Give you just enough room for some pipe. So as you can see, there's not a lot of room there. There's only gonna be, you know, say 150 or 200 of pipe. Once all these fittings get screwed together, they're gonna to bunch up a bit more, so there'll be a bit more room there. Uh, and then the way this pump works is water will fill up the sump, and that float will lift up. If you listen for this, that click is the pump engaging. It's got a, a ball inside that. The water will then pump out until it clicks off. And that's there. So if that's floating in water, you can see it's probably got 80 to 100 mil of water still covering the pump. That's important because if the pump runs dry, sometimes it can be hard for it to reprime itself. So when the uh, landscaper or the plumber fits this on site, they need to make sure that they get water in the, pot, the outlet pipe or the rising main, uh, which can be done by um, taking that barrel union off and letting water come back down the pipe. Uh, sometimes you'll be lucky and you can put it in and it will prime itself, but it depends on how much head you've got. I put one of these in at my house recently. We've got about 50 meters of head, so we had to run water down the hose to fill it up so that it was primed. And that's pretty much it. If you get air in uh, the pipe with this, air compresses, so the pump can't prime it because it's just pushing the air and it, um, it can't break through that. I don't even know what the term for that is, but if you do airlock. comment comment below, airlock. I think it's called an airlock. He's winning so far. So if that's, right, if that's right, give him a thumbs that's up. It. If it's wrong, comment below. So once it's full of water, the float will obviously slowly float up or when it's filling up with water, I don't want to waste any water. Um, so I'll simulate the float. See, it's, it's actually priming itself now. 
Uh, so yeah. Brandon has successfully completed the construction of a 600 by 600 sump and pump package with a run for CC7. Get that on the big jobs. <laughs> uh, Alright, ship it. Consider it ship, boss. <laughs>